All right, hello again. So in this video, we're gonna do what I call Franken Faces, which is a very scary movie from the early 19th century with Bela Lugosi. No, it's something different. We're gonna put two faces together, and that's what I'm calling Franken Faces. So it'll give us a chance to talk about um, layers a little bit, uh, layer masks, uh, free transform, maybe some other stuff too. All right, so we've got two images here. Let me make these a little bit bigger. And they are faces, right? So. Um, Assuming you're shooting these yourself, you would want to shoot these with the same lighting, same distance apart, uh, or same distance from the camera, uh, same background, same focal length, same everything. So um, that makes them easier to combine, right? So uh, these were shot at the same time. If I was going to do this again, I probably would do this with a cleaner background because that would make it easier too and you wouldn't see the seams as much, but you'll see what I mean when we do this. So what I'm gonna do first is just uh, hold down shift. Uh, I'm in bridge here. I'm gonna double click to open both of these. So here's one and here's the other. So I have to get, I'm gonna put both of these together. Um, so what I can do is I can click on one or the other. It doesn't really matter too much. Let's do, let's take this one. I'm gonna go over here to the layers panel. So the layers panel is down on the lower right by default down there, right? I'm just gonna drag from there and here's a little thing I can do. I can drag it up to the tab for the other and then uh, drag it right there. I could have just let it go in that tab, I think, but um, yeah, so now I've got those two layers. So if I look right there, they're not lined up. I could have done that a little differently, but um, so I've got those two layers. Remember in layers in Photoshop, the one on top, Think of them as sort of like the layers, stacked layers, right? So the one on top is the one that I see. So I'm gonna grab the move tool here, which is the top tool there. I could hit B on my keyboard too, but I'm gonna hit the move tool and grab that and put it right on top. It doesn't have to be exactly because we're gonna move this around. Um, I'm actually gonna put this bottom layer on top uh, for no really good reason, but just that's the way I just did it when I was practicing a minute ago. That's a good reason, right? Um, so I'm going to go look down here see it says background and then I don't know if you can see there's a little lock right there. So to move to rearrange these I need to change that into a regular layer. So one way to do that is just double click it. I just double click right there and it says new layer layer zero. I don't really have to do anything. I can just hit enter or hit OK with the mouse if I want to be slow about it. And now that is a regular layer layer zero. So I'm going to rearrange these layers. Um, just because I want to. So I'm going to drag this layer. I'm gonna zoom in here for you guys to see a little better. I'm gonna drag this layer above that one. You see it kind of highlights, it's pretty subtle. It's got a little blue highlight. It might be different on yours. But now I've got the her on top and him on the, um, this layer on top and this layer on the bottom. And that's how you can rearrange layers, you just drag. So, uh, so now this one is on top. So now the next step is uh, I want to line these up. So they're not lined up. They're not exactly the right uh, size, I don't think, as far as the, sh the head size, um, things like that. So I want to line these up. So what I was doing right there is I can click on the eyeball. You probably knew this, but I can click on the eyeball to turn on and off that layer. All right, so here's a little trick to get these lined up. I'm going to go to opacity, which is the uh, how opaque that layer is. It's kind of the opposite of transparency. And I'm just gonna go set that to about 50%. It doesn't have to be anything exactly. It's just so I can see both layers at once. So now I've got sort of a double image, right? I've got uh, this layer is on top and I can, I'm still on the move tool here. I can move that around. And if, uh, if I turn that off, you'll see that that layer is still underneath. All right, so what I'm gonna do is match up um, these layers as good as I can approximately, that would be exactly, and um, line things up. I'm gonna line up them, line them up by the nose, or I'm sorry, the eyes and the mouth. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna zoom out. Remember you can hold down Option or Alt and use your uh, scroll wheel if you have one to zoom, or I could do Command Plus or Command Minus. And then I'm going to, I think this top layer is a little too small. So I'm gonna line up the left eye just to give me a reference point. And now I'm gonna to go to free transform. You could do this different ways, but I'm gonna to go to edit and free transform. Right there, it's command T. And free transform is a way that you can um, uh, transform a layer. You can rotate it, you can skew it, you can um, do a lot of different things to it. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm just gonna resize a bit. So I'm just gonna drag out. I can drag from a corner to resize. 
and then I'm going to keep rearranging here until they look like they're about the same size. Uh, a little bit more, I think. And I'm going to zoom in. I still have to be able to grab the handles, but uh, I think there's a little rotation too. So if you want to rotate with free transform, you can grab right here and rotate. So I'm going to rotate a little. I think there's a tiny bit of rotation in there. And I'm, I'm always looking at this eye, and then I'm going to try to get this eye in the same spot. It's just kind of a little bit of trial and error. You, you probably can do it better than me, I bet you. Uh, I think it needs to get just a little bit bigger. There we go, I think. So if I look at the eyes, that one's lined up, and that's pretty darn close. And then the mouths are kind of lined up too, which makes sense because most people have the mouth in the center of their face. Most people. Um, maybe not Frankenstein, but most people do. And then uh, I think we're good. There are a bunch of shortcuts you can do. I can do this to grab the side. That also scales. I can hold down various um, keys, like I'm holding down the command key, which would be the control key on a PC, and I can do all kinds of crazy skew stuff. I'm undoing this because I've already got it kind of lined up, but I wanted to show you how you could do that. I can go to the middle, and I can hold down Option and Command, or Alt and Control on a PC, and I can skew. That would not work, right? But I'm just showing you that there's a lot of uh, modifiers for the free transform, so you can do different kinds of transforms. We don't need to do that on this one, I don't believe. Uh, let me see if the mouth, no, the mouth is pretty good. I think they're pretty lined up. So once you get it lined up the way you want it, you hit enter on your keyboard or return. And now that, um, that processes that free transform. And so we are good, I think. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and go back to the opacity here and change that back to 100 uh, for now. Okay, so the next step is I want to use a mask to hide parts of this top layer. Um, you probably have seen masks already maybe in one of the videos, but if not, I'm gonna assume that you haven't. So a mask is a way to hide and show parts of, the, of a layer. So I'm going to go to this top layer, I'm already on it, uh, by coincidence. And then there's a button down here at the very bottom that will add a mask. It looks like a rectangle with a little circle in it. So I added a mask. It is a white mask by default. White mask doesn't do anything yet. So uh, the way the masks work is wherever it's white, it's going to show this top layer. Wherever it's black, it's not going to show it. Wherever it's gray, it's going to be in between, um, if that makes sense. And now you have to be careful too that when you have a mask, you can work on the mask itself or on the layer. So it depends what you click on and it has this little brackets around it to tell you what you're, what you're actually um, working on. So why am I using a mask? I wanna hide parts of this layer. I could go here. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna show you. I could go here and I could grab the eraser and I could make a, get a big eraser here and I could start erasing. I don't want to do that. Look down here in this layer, right? I've deleted, I have basically erased part of her face. That's a horrible thing to do. I think it's a crime. It's got to be a felony. So I don't want to do that. I want to just hide parts of it. If I delete it, I just did Command Z, by the way, to undo that. If I erase it, right, if I do that, it's gone, pretty much. And so if I want to go back later and change my mind, I've kind of erased it. I've kind of messed it up. So one, the good thing about a mask is they're always editable. So that's why you want to use a mask instead. One reason. So I almost never use the eraser um, just because of, partly because of that reason. So don't use an eraser when you're doing this kind of thing. This is for compositing, right? We're talking about compositing, putting images together. All right. So here we've got our mask. I'm going to make sure I'm on the mask, uh, which I am. I just clicked back on it. So like I said, if it's black to, sh to uh, hide parts of the layer and white to show it. So I'm going to hit D on the keyboard, which is actually the same. That's the default colors, which is actually the same as hitting this tiny little button that's hard to hit. I'll hit the button for fun. And that will set the um, default colors, which are black and white. Um, and then there's a little button next to it that will swap those two colors. I didn't zoom correctly there. The little button right there will swap. So if I click that, it goes back and forth. Why do I care? Because that's a quick way to switch between hiding and showing the layer. I can also just hit X on my keyboard. That does the same thing as clicking that little uh, button. So I want black. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit X until I get black there, right there, in the foreground color. 
Then I'm gonna grab my brush tool. So it's right there. Uh, you can hit B on your keyboard, but that's the brush tool. I want this to be uh, pretty soft. So I'm gonna go up to here, and you can do this different ways with shortcuts and things, but I'm gonna go up to the controls up here in the top in the um, options panel. And I'm gonna click, and I wanna make sure the hardness is zero. I had that set to 100 for some reason. And I'm gonna set the hardness to zero. That means it's soft, right? The opposite of hard is soft in this case. And that's because if I have a hard brush, it's gonna have a seam. You'll be able to see the edge of that, um, of that uh, mask more easily. The transition is what I'm getting at. All right, so I've got a soft brush. I can use, just like on other brushes, I can use these square brackets next to your P key to resize the brush to whatever size I want. All right, so I'm gonna get a brush, I don't know, whatever size you want, and I'm gonna paint a little bit over this eye. So you, did you see that? That was amazing. I did that quick, I'm gonna undo it. I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna zoom in here. So I've got my, make sure I've got my brush tool. I've got black in the brush. There's my brush, right? I'm on the mask, the mask is white. If I paint with black into the mask, it hides that part of the layer. Look over here. In the layers panel, I can see where it's black. I'm now hiding her left eye. It's on our right side, but it's her left eye. I'm gonna paint here and do the same thing. And then I'm gonna paint here and hide her nose. And then we could leave it there, but I'm gonna do the mouth too, just because I'm gonna make a really unpleasant image, a scary image. All right, there we go. So <clears throat> I just hid the parts of her face. Let me zoom in again here. I hid the parts of her face that are have the black part here, and then the rest of this is showing. So that's why we're seeing through that layer. A um, Couple of little shortcuts I could do. I can hold down shift and click on that mask right there. And that turns the mask on and off. So I can quickly like say, what does it look like without the mask, with the mask, without the mask, with the mask. Um, I can also do, I can hold down option or uh, alt on the PC. And if I click on the mask now, I see only the mask. And that's a good technique to see like, oh, did I miss some spots? Maybe I, maybe when I painted, let me just get a new brush and I'll hit X and I'll make a small part. Maybe I missed a little spot like that, right? And now I'm actually not, I'm seeing her nose right there. So when you hold down Option or Alt and click on the mask, you can see those kinds of problems. Maybe that's a problem for you. And I'm gonna hit uh, X to switch back to black and I'm gonna fix that. So it'll, it can let you spot little areas. And I'm gonna connect these two areas. There's no probably a reason for me to not connect these two areas, so I'm gonna do that. And then you hit, Hold down Option or Alt to click on the mask again, and it's um, back to that. You can also obviously click on the whole, the, the eyeball here on that layer to turn it on and off. And you can do that obviously on the bottom layer, but then you're gonna have a hole in the face. So now that we've got that mask there, you can see it's hiding the top part of this part of the her face, right? But it's not deleted. If I change my mind, I can always go back here hit X on my keyboard, right, to go back and forth between these guys. And now let's say, well, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't wanna do the mouth, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint with white. And there's her mouth back. Oh, that's creepy. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. I don't know why that's more creepy than the other way, but yes. So if you paint with white, you're gonna paint it, you're gonna show it, and if you paint with black, you're gonna hide it, and you're not deleting anything, so that's the great part. All right, so I think that is pretty good for the compositing part. Uh, I wanted to add on just a tiny bit here uh, with an adjustment layer. And I may do a separate video, maybe, maybe not. Depends on um, my mood, usually. No, uh, I may do another uh, another one how to match these skin tones, but a quick one that kind of works on this one is um, I'm gonna use a layer a levels adjustment layer. So I'm gonna zoom back out. I did Command Zero to zoom out to see everything. You can obviously see that their skin tones are different. That's just, they're two different people, um, right, with different skin tones. Oh, by the way, I think I mentioned shooting everything the same way for both subjects. You might actually wanna use, you probably do, wanna shoot in manual exposure. That way the camera is not gonna to try to compensate for their skin tones and things. Uh, it might work, but I, I would suggest doing it with manual so that the entire exposure is the same. 
If it's not, then the background's gonna be a different brightness and all kinds of things, things can happen. All right, so what am I gonna do? Uh, I'm going to go to the bottom layer here, which is layer one, which is uh, this guy at the bottom here. I'm gonna make what's called an adjustment layer, and you may have seen this already, but you, there's an adjustment layer button. It looks like, I call it like a black and white cookie, which you don't see very much anymore. They're pretty, pretty weird. I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna go to levels. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. Like I said, uh, you'll see another way, or I'll at least tell you another way to do this. But I'm gonna use levels here. So levels is a, um, and let me backtrack a little bit. This is called an adjustment layer, if you haven't seen that before. This is going to adjust how this layer looks. Um, everything below it, it adjusts to that. Um, but it doesn't change the layer at all. That's the cool part. So I can turn this off and get rid of it. I'll show you when we do it here. And I can make it not work or work by turning it on or off. I could delete it, but it's not changing these. I could do a levels adjustment directly on this layer, but then it's kind of baked in. It's kind of like erasing. So I don't really want to do that. I want to do uh, an adjustment layer. All right, so up here are your controls for the adjustment layer. You've got RGB right here, that's red, green, and blue. That's basically the brightness of the image right there, it says RGB. And if I click there, you see there's red, green, and blue underneath there, right there. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to show you is, I wanted to show you real quick before we do this, underneath channels, so I'm on layers, right? There's layers. If I click on channels, you'll see there's a levels one mask. So um, there are those, it, it ends up at being a, a layer mask or an adjustment layer ends up being as um, an extra channel. So your channels, you have a red, green, and blue channel. Um, but if I start adding layer masks and alpha channels and things like that, they'll show up under the channels menu. So I just wanted to show you that. There's that, there's that mask that we made. So it shows up in both places actually, in layers and in uh, channels. Okay, good enough. All right, so I'm back on the layers adjustment or the levels adjustment layer right there. I want to make sure that I'm on that. And then I'm going to look at this. I'm going to eyeball this um, by just kind of estimating. I'm thinking that he, this bottom layer is too dark, right, compared to her. He's, his skin is darker than hers, right? So to fix that or to get those closer together, I'm going to go to this middle levels adjustment. I'm going to go to the left to make it brighter or the right to make it darker. That is not the right direction, right? So I'm gonna go to the left and I'm just gonna try to get, you know, pretty close. Um, yeah, maybe somewhere around there. Okay, so that is uh, a little better. And then again, if I go down and turn on and off that, that layer by clicking on the eyeball, you can see the before and after the change that you made. The other thing that I'm thinking is uh, he, this bottom layer is a little bit more yellow in the skin tone and she's a little more red um, just because of the way their skin is, right? So I wanted to show you this. This is from a different kind of adjustment layer, but it shows the, how the, the relationship of these colors, right? So the red, green, and blue, we're in red, green, and blue uh, mode, right? RGB, they have an opposite, right? It's like the anti-matter from Star Trek. No, it's not like that. We've got red, opposite is cyan. Green, the opposite is magenta. Blue is the opposite is yellow. So keep that in mind because I think this bottom layer, the guy is a little bit too yellow. So what's the opposite of yellow? It's blue, right, in this system. So I'm gonna go up here in the layers, or in the levels control right there, and I'm gonna select blue and after I select blue, I only see the histogram for the blue channel. <clears throat> so remember that blue, its opposite is yellow, but it, it might look a little bit strange when we do this, but uh, I think there's some yellow, a little too much yellow there again, like I said. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this center slider, which is the mid-tones. The right one is the highlights. The left one is the shadows or the black point, actually. And this is the midtones, which is the middle brightnesses. So I think the skin is kind of in the middle. It's not black and it's not white, right? So I'm gonna drag, and if I go, if I drag this, this way it starts to turn magenta. And that's just the way the colors are mixing. And if I go to the right, it starts to turn yellow. Um, so I am gonna go until this, I'm just eyeballing this, like I said, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm eyeballing this a little bit to say like, where should this be? And I think it's about, 
Um, let me go back to one. So the default is one here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's very small. That's the default, right? So I'm going to go to the right, just to, or sorry, to the left, just a little, to the right, just a little. I say left, right, left, right. It's not much. I uh, ended up at 108, somewhere around there. And I'm just looking, maybe 110. So I'm at 1.1 right there on that center slider. And it's not much, but I think it kind of got rid of a little bit of that yellow. And I'm looking, I'm looking in here while I'm doing this. I think uh, now I'm at 113. I think that's pretty good. That looks pretty darn close. What do you guys think? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that did it. So again, if I turn that uh, that levels adjustment layer off down here, right, I can hit the eyeball. That's before and that's after. So that's one way to try to match skin tones is using a levels adjustment. You can also do it with curves adjustment layer layers. There's even a fancy way to do it by using color sampling, which uh, I'll either link to or I'll show you myself. Uh, depends. But I think I think that is it. So hopefully that helps a little bit um, with understanding compositing, putting images together, using layer masks to hide or show parts of a layer, using adjustment layers to make adjustments between layers, right? Um, and uh, I think that's it. So I'll talk to you again later.